Good morning and welcome to this week. Uh, this week we're coming to you uh, from uh, New York and from Ithaca and also from the occupation that is taking place right outside of City Hall uh, in defense of uh, Black Lives Matter. Uh, we have Michael with us. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Joe. How are you? Hey man, I'm okay. I, I, I am okay. I am so proud and excited about this development that is taking place here uh, in, in New York City, uh, right outside of the uh, City Hall next to the Brooklyn Bridge and the park facing the City Hall. Michael, you have uh, one of the activists who is participating in the uh, occupation there. Uh, take it away. Hey, Scott. Yeah. Hey, so Joe. Hey, Michael. The third day. This is the third day of uh, uh, protesting outside of City Hall here, here in City Hall Park. Those of us who were present in the Occupy movement uh, for Occupy Wall Street, it's a lot like the you know, to us. Uh, but here today, I have a protester who's been here. His name is Jason. And he can tell you a little bit about what the demands are, how long we will be here, and what are the organizations exactly involved. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Um, good, Jason, good morning, Jason. Protest. Hey, good to see you, buddy. All right. Peace, peace, peace. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so we're out here at City Hall. It's our third day. Um, organizers came together being led, a call being led by Black organizers to really demand $1 billion divestment from NYPD to be invested into Black and Brown communities. Um, New York City's budget for the NYPD is $6 billion. Um, when the Bla yeah, when the Blasio administration started, it was five billion. It increased um during his tenure. And this is a mayor, our progressive mayor, right? Um, uh, who increased the militarization in the police force. Um uh in, in police were doing things as far as um just over policing communities, policing poverty, uh policing poor people in particular. Um, uh, and we know that those communities are oftentimes majority in New York City, black and brown communities. So we're asking for $1 billion to be cut from the NYPD budget and invested into black and brown communities. We want to see at greater access to affordable housing and permanent housing. We want to have quality education. We want to have full access to healthcare services. Um, yeah. We want to see police removed from our schooling system. Uh, we want to end the school to prison pipeline. Uh, we really want this money to be invested in black and brown communities after systemic poverty has impacted our community disproportionately. So you're placing a demand uh, before the city council? So, the mayor. so, yeah, so we haven't made any demands for public council. We have folks on the ground here who are calling day and night constantly to every city council member elevating our demands. One of the things that we are hearing right now is that the money may potentially shift to enforcement officers within city agencies. So it's okay. gonna to go to another policing apparatus. We're like, no, fuck that. Divestment and invest into community, into healthcare infrastructure, into the support that our community needs. We're keeping our eye on city council. Um, we're keeping our eye on the mayor's office. And we're hearing they may do some tricky things as far as like shifting money. So what they call peace officers. And these peace officers are just as abusive as, as some of these uh, NYPD officers. Right, right. So one of the ways the community can support what you what you guys are doing is by calling the city uh, members of members of the city council. Yes, totally. And doing the same thing and making the same kinds of uh, demands. And yes. uh, so the city council is supposed to meet on on Tuesday. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so the uh, New York City budget finalizes on the 30, 30th and it's implemented and goes into effect January 1st. I mean, um, excuse me, July 1st. Okay. Um, so yeah. Yep. All right. Well, we support y'all 100%. Thank we're you. glad Thank that you all are down there representing for everybody. And we're gonna do everything that we can to publicize the uh, event. Now, I understand that the march on Monday, there's a march on, on, on Monday from mm -hmm. Washington Square down to City Hall. Mm hmm Okay. Are, are folks going down on Monday? Right. Um, there's a march. Oh, yes. There, there, there is another for uh, the queer liberation folks. The queer liberation movement, uh, Reclaim Pride, is doing a march on Sunday. 
and coming down to join with the protesters on the ground. Um, last year, we had 40,000 folks who came from, from Reclaim Pride. Um, this year, we're expecting that to grow since the, the capitalist pride is canceled, um, but the people's pride is still going on. Uh, so we plan on engulfing the whole of City Hall um, uh, on this uh, Sunday. On so Sunday. you're gonna expect to see tons of folks out here talking about black liberation, talking about defunding the NYPD and Black Lives Matter. All right, all right. Well, once again, congratulations and thank you very thank much. Thank you. Scott, you have any questions? Uh, I just wanted to um, yeah, express uh, my solidarity my congratulations and my, my joy at seeing this this beautiful um, movement uh, growing. Um, you know, I, I, I've been thinking that, you know, in a certain sense, protest isn't even the right word for it anymore because a, a protest, we have these words like protest and demonstration that are really, um, they're sort of rhetorical actions, right? A, you, you make a grievance, you make a complaint, you make a statement, you demonstrate something. Um, this is this is growing into something bigger than that and beyond that, which is, um, it's not about saying something, it's about demanding and making uh, change. And, and that's wonderful to see. Um, yeah. And as an index, uh, sort of uh, a sign of how, how influential it's been, there was a vote recently in Chicago on um, cutting the contract between the Chicago Public Schools and the Chicago Police Department. Um, so the, the Board of Education in Chicago is appointed by the mayor exclusively. Yeah. It's um, traditionally extremely loyal to him, um, but that measure failed by only one vote, uh, which shows that, I mean, it's, it, it's disappointing in one sense, but in another sense, um, it shows that this um, movement to cut that contract, which was led by uh, students, high school students, um, is, has really gained ground and is um, challenging uh, the city in, in ways that, um, certainly hasn't been seen in, in, in decades. So right, it's, right. Uh, it's wonderful. This is a nationwide movement. It's in Chicago, it's in uh, Minneapolis, it's in Atlanta, uh, it's in LA, it's all, all, all over the country. And that's yes, what yes. Makes yep, totally. Right. So once again, thank you very much. And uh, thank you. Uh, we're down with you and we will be down there with you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Appreciate Thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Bye, Michael. Thank you. So um, that's one hell of a protest you got down there, Mike. How many people would you estimate are down there uh, in the square? You know, I counted just on myself, 76, 78. I arrived at the first thing I did, I started counting. But I was told, you know, I was surprised because it's less people than yesterday. And they said that's because they started marching. The marches have not stopped. You know, this is a change of tactics, but people are marching all day still. Sometimes they go across the Brooklyn Bridge, which is right here in front of me. So it's yes. easy to take the bridge and occupy the bridge at all times. Uh -huh. um, some people head uptown uh, to Times Square and so forth. And so it's a constant um, influx, like bringing people in, taking people out. And that's what they want. They want constant movement and they want constant occupation, not necessarily with the same people. It can be different people here all day. You know, some people go home and rest, you know, because right. I heard the first things that everyone told me was, oh, we didn't sleep at all last night. We were singing and dancing all night, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's the people are having fun, but they're making, you know, a statement. You know, they're, here are the offices right here in front of me, and they make it a point to bring loud microphones so that the people in their offices hear. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, when, when we were down there yesterday, I thought that maybe there was around 700 uh, uh, people. And, uh, and, and as I was leaving the march, I could hear another march coming to join uh, everybody down at the square. So you're right, it's a constant uh, influx and outflux of, of, uh, of people and protests. It's, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, <clears throat> so Scott, uh, uh, this week, there's been a lot of uh, uh, developments that uh, uh, take place. Uh, the president uh, was uh, in uh, Arizona yep. uh, uh, for what is being called a, a super spreader event. Did you get yeah, this is, to watch it? It's insane. You know, um, people have used the word culture of death to describe the, the Trump regime, and and it's sort of core followers. And that's what we're seeing, a, a, a mass rally packed 3,000 some people uh, with 
no masks, no distancing in a state that's experiencing already a, a, a surge in, in cases, it's, it's beyond irresponsible. It's, um, it, it boggles the mind. Um, on, on the upside, um, you know, polls are now showing uh, Trump trailing really significantly uh, in the November elections. Um, yeah. And we can, the only thing we can attribute this to, I think, is the, you know, the, the, this massive upsurge of the people, which is demanding equality and dignity and safety and the affirmation of, of life, uh, which is everything the Trump regime stands against. Um, yeah, I think it's attributable to uh, the uh, protests and the Trump administration's uh, reaction aggressive, threatening, militaristic, proto-fascist. Um, I could use a lot of other adjectives uh, to describe <laughs> it, reaction to it. That's one thing. And the other thing is there is, is their uh, uh, crisis and inability to respond in a responsible way to the health crisis. Mm -hmm. Then you got to add to that, Michael, the way that they're responding to the economic crisis. You know what I'm saying? I was actually just going to comment on the fact that, you know, here when I arrived a little bit earlier, I was asking people, you know, I tell them I'm in the Communist Party, and you ask them how they identify politically, and most of them will just tell you, you know, quote unquote, oh, I'm liberal or progressive, or maybe you'll get a socialist here and there. But you heard, you know, the young man I just interviewed, and he said, you know, we're reclaiming pride. We're making the people's pride and not a capitalist pride, you know. Mm -hmm. So you have the average, quote unquote, liberal and progressive understanding the connections between this, this this uprising against racism and fascism and connecting it to the unemployment crisis, you know, the capitalist crisis. And so your average quote unquote centrist or moderate is beginning to speak like a communist as one of our comrades said yesterday. And so, you know, this is really the unity that, you know, our party is all about. We've always said in order for there to even be a revolution, there has to be working class unity. And we're seeing the beginning stages of that, if not the advanced stages, you know, at the local level, at least. Unity on the issue. Yeah, the and people, people know what they want. Their, their, their demands, their needs are reflected in a socialist and, and communist program. Um, what I think what people are learning now is um, what's necessary to get there. Um, uh, and and no that's taking the beauty on. of it, because our basic demands to be able to live, to be able to breathe uh, uh, COVID-free air, you know what I'm saying, uh, to be able to eat and uh, pay your rent uh, are now linked up to what is it going to take in order to address um, the crisis? what kinds of measures are necessary in order to address the uh, a crisis. As you know, unemployment is 15% officially, which means it's 20 or 25% unofficially, and the benefits are gonna run out on July the 31st. What's gonna happen? And so, and since the beginning of March, I, I was just reading, there has not been a single week with fewer than a million new unemployment claims yes every week yes you know um i don't know what people are going to do uh, <clears throat> but the main thing that we got to do is is uh struggle and uh, struggle and uh and then uh, a struggle uh, uh, some more well i think our time is just about up uh we have a uh some programs coming up this weekend on sunday isn't there a webinar Sunday? Yes, uh, um, a class on imperialism uh, in its current form. All right, um, and it's going to be led by Alvaro uh, at eight yep. o'clock. Uh, it'll be eight o'clock Eastern on Sunday. Go to cpusa.org and scroll down a little bit. You'll be able to find the uh, a link for the webinar. You don't want to miss it. There are only one hundred places available. So please uh, sign up already. 200 people have uh, uh, registered. So we hope you um, hurry up and uh, register so that you can uh, participate. 
Um, and then we got some new copy up on the website um, uh, this week. Um, I think that uh, there's an article on policing and um, abolition, Michael, uh, by Jamal uh, that addresses some of the uh, 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 major issues that are being uh, debated and, and demanded by this uh, people's uprising uh, against uh, the constant murder of young black uh, men, uh, women, uh, LGBTQ people. Have you had a chance to read Jamal's article, Michael? I have, and you know, it really lays out the, the fundamental steps it takes in order to you know, police the police, defund the police, and ultimately abolish the police. You know, there's a lot of debate out there, not just on the left, even at movements like this. You see people signs that say defund and abolish. And what the overall movement has really agreed on, and it's a good, you know, point of unity, is that in order to even talk about abolition, you have to start with community control because you can't even defund unless you have community control. Yep. And it's not a civilian review board. It's civilian control. Once you have civilian control, you can defund disarm and ultimately disband and you know in the in the in the future and so you know and we have to get from a to point z right and there's many steps in between um but it seems you know we see good news coming out of minneapolis and their recent decision to disband the police department and start from zero we see it looks like it's going to be good news here in new york city and in, in terms of defunding s6 of the of the police budget that's one billion dollars but you know that's out of a six billion dollar budget and so the overall narrative here is we need at least a billion dollars to be cut, right? It could be more. So we'll see. Um, we're supportive of this. And again, everyone check out uh, the article that, that Joe mentioned on cpusa.org uh, by Jamal Rich. All right. All right. Well, uh, good morning, Revolution. And uh, Michael, good, good luck down there at the occupation. And uh, Scott, uh, <laughs> easy. We'll see you, uh, everybody, next week. Same time, same station. Uh, here All right. on Facebook and on uh, uh, YouTube. Take care, and uh, Take we'll care. talk to everybody soon. Bye now. Thanks, comrades. Later. Power to the people.